going to get fired right up with news you can use for today, the 5th of July. A uh, couple of things. I'm going to kind of do a hodgepodge. Uh, normally don't do this on Tuesday morning, but there's been a lot of news recently. Uh, first of all, interest rates are up. Everybody knows that, uh, and specifically in the mortgage business and in the real estate thing. Uh, interest rates are up currently around 6%, little above or little below, depending on what lender you get, your credit score, that type of thing. This is over double from what it was at its lowest point, which was around 2.58. Um, and this has the effect, uh, it has several things uh, that is, it is affected. Number one, inventory, housing stock available on the market is up. Uh, number of sellers out there who want to sell their home up. This is all up from a year ago. Uh, number of buyers who are actively seeking to buy a house down. Uh, and prices. Uh, in, in Anybody who's being genuine and serious and real about this thing will tell you that prices are down. Uh, from what they were a year ago. Now, you still have the crackheads out there like Zillow saying that they expect this year, at the end of this year, to be 18% higher than the end of last year. That's patently false. I can tell you as somebody who's in this business on a daily basis, uh, prices are dropping. Uh, Moody's, who's the more middle-of-the-road respected economists, and I would tend to trust their stuff 99.9% uh, .9 of the time versus Zillow zero uh, is showing a 5% decrease year over year. So December 31st, 2022 should be about 5% less. Now, they're predicting that this is the best in the world. In other words, other countries, specifically Australia, New Zealand, England, they're expecting a 20% and they're seeing it already a 20% drop in prices this year. Um, and other countries, uh, lesser amounts, all the way down to 5%, which is considered the best in the world. In other words, we've done the best job of managing our, our currency uh, during that COVID period. And, uh, you know, we're going to be fortunate to just get by with a 5% drop in prices across the board. Now, in certain areas, of course, we're seeing already 20, 25% drop. Other areas, we're seeing the prices stay the same. Those are very few and far between. Um, but I can tell you from my, my little real life perch on the world, uh, we got an offer in this morning on a house that we just completed last week. This is the house that, uh, we put on the market, I think Friday night. Um, and we got a, a written offer. This, we actually had multiple, but the one that we're going to take this morning, uh, was about $6,000 over ask. Um, we specifically put the price a, a little, slightly lower from what we thought we could get. Um, it still is in the range of the top, you know, 20% of the pricing in that particular area. Of course, we did a great job of rehabbing this property. It was a total rehab, like a $80,000 rehab job. So from soup to nuts, uh, but it is at, um, you know, the conditions that are current in the marketplace. So the conditions that we're seeing buyers have to do out there is they're you know they will typically ask for some concessions now from sellers sellers can put money into the equation and buy down the buyer's loan so if a buyer can't afford a 6.2 percent fixed rate mortgage a seller could put ten thousand dollars into the kitty and that could buy that loan down a permanent fixed rate loan for the for the buyers down to like 4.3 percent depending on the price of the uh, the, the dollar amounts in, involved in the mortgage. But in our particular case, they got no, we got uh, no concessions that we had to put into that deal. In other words, they're going to take it as is. There's no inspection contingency. There's no financing contingency. There's no gotchas in that deal. Uh, they're taking it as is, I mean, which is great because in perfect condition. And I'll, I'll show you guys a video of that uh, probably third, maybe Wednesday. Tomorrow, we'll probably show that video. Actually, remind me, I'll send that over so you can see the video and you can see the listing so you guys can actually can see what we're doing. Um, anyway, uh, no concessions of any kind, 30-day uh, close, which I'd like to get a little quicker, but that's that's still fair in this market. 30 days, uh, full price plus 6,000, a little bit over. So we were at 199, we got 205 on this deal. Um, and, and, you know, we could have other offers come in. We're probably going to go ahead and take this one, get this thing done and move on to the next deal. Um, all right. The big issue out there, uh, you know, so I think we're going to manage through 
the interest rate things and the pricing things. Um, and one of the nice things about less buyers out there uh, is there was probably 10 or 20 buyers for every house uh, a year ago. And today there's five. Um, and I would have told you before this morning, you're not going to get any offers above ask. That's the second house in a row that we've sold above ask. Last one, we sold 25,000 over ask. Um, I would not expect that to happen uh, going forward. I expect that thing to moderate and uh, you'll see things at ask or even a little below, which is fine. You just budget accordingly. It makes it better when you're buying properties. Um, but I think we're going to be able to manage through all that prospect uh, and, and potentials. And as I've mentioned, we're in that golden window that we, we get about every 15 years when just about anything you touch, you can make money on. Because even with only five people interested in buying a house, that's still five times what you need. You only need one. Um, and so if you are inclined to get into the rehab side of the business or do some repairs on some houses, uh, I would encourage you to do that. It's not normally what we teach. We teach seller finance, but there is always this window. It was about a six month period in 2006. I think this one's gonna be about an 18 month period. I think it's gonna go towards the fall quarter of 2023 when anything you buy, if you buy it cheap enough and you do a good job of rehab and you can sell and make a big profit, a, a decent profit on. Uh, 2006, when I did this, we made $100,000 or more on every project for nine months. Um, this, you know, we're in some smaller markets. That was all California. Uh, now we're, we're in various markets across the country, like everybody on this call is. And so we're not making as much, but you know, we'll still make 80,000 per house, uh, that type of thing. We made a couple hundred on the, the, the one last month. Um, and so there is, there's big money to be made, uh, out there. If you're willing to, to take that risk and to go out there and, uh, and find those deals. There, there is one big issue that nobody is focusing on internationally, and I think it is one that merits some looking at, and it is the issue of China's yuan, Y-U-A-N. That's their dollar equivalent. Uh, that's their currency. Uh, the U.S. dollar has always been the world's reserve currency. In other words, everybody would keep, Russia would keep rubles, they would finance, do their own ruble thing with their, their currency, but they'd always keep a store of U.S. dollars as a hedge. We were the reserve, we have been the reserve currency. Over the last year, about 85% of the central banks in the world are interested in considering or holding or are currently holding one as the reserve currency. This thing has the possibility to flip over very quickly. When this does, and I think it will, we talked about it about a year and a half ago about the reserve currency going over to crypto from US dollar. That never materialized. But I think this has a better, uh, a better option. And one of the reasons is the Chinese uh, central government seems to be a little bit quicker on the draw at managing their economy. In other words, they're already in their recession. We're going to hit that recession probably in the next few months. It's going to last, I believe, all of next year. Um, and they, they force their economy into a quicker recession to get the bad stuff behind them. So they're in the in the bulk of the recession. They're at probably on the tail end, um, and that gives other central banks around the world comfort that they're they're not playing with their currency. They're not artificially kicking that can down the road like we did uh, with all this free money we gave out during COVID and printing money uh, to keep the housing market inflated, artificially inflated. We've got to take our lumps now. The Chinese, like I said, have already done that. And I think when uh, the rest of the world gets on board, we've got a huge amount, 85% of all the central banks, central banks, essentially the government bank, uh, like the Fed, it's the government bank from each of the sovereignties around the world. All the countries in the world have some form of central bank. So 85% of those are on board with considering the one as a replacement uh, for the dollar. And when that happens, it's going to devalue our dollar It'll be hard to get us out of an inflationary cycle. It will cost us a lot more, um, you know, to do uh, anything with our dollar. In other words, you know, it could get to the point where, uh, you know, gas is $10 a gallon type thing. 
So I hope that doesn't help happen. Uh, you know, right now we're still the top dog uh, in the world in terms of reserve currency, but I, I see that thing sliding in the other direction. Um, and, uh, you know, it's some missteps by our government. We, you know, we, we froze assets and we did different things during this Russia-Ukraine war. Chinese didn't. So more people flood, fled to their dollar, their yuan, uh, over us, uh, deeming it more secure and less likely to be affected by global events. And that's the, the mark of a hallmark of a currency, a world's reserve currency. So uh, if that happens, expect inflation to go through the roof and we'll just hope that doesn't happen. I'll keep you guys up to speed as things change out there in the world regarding the currency that will affect us the housing market, obviously, because it will bump interest rates even higher. Now, last thing, interest rates. Uh, the Federal Reserve is meeting again this month. Uh, I would expect them to raise interest rates again. Uh, the scuttlebutt out there is it could be 50 to 75 basis points. In other words, a half a percent interest to three quarters of a percent interest. I think that is uh, primarily baked into the market already. In other words, we shouldn't see interest rates on the mortgage side go significantly higher. It could go to six and a half, six and three quarters for a fixed rate. Um, but I think we're looking at seven to eight by the end of the year. Um, so we'll see. There is, there's a small amount of scuttlebutt out there saying that the Fed has been too late to the party. Uh, the hammer that they applied to, uh, to be the solution was too little, too late and it actually fanned inflation in this country. I tend to believe that. Uh, I'm, I'm more in that camp. And I think that there is a small possibility, five to 10%, that the Fed will actually have to, instead of raising interest rates next year, will actually have to drop them. Uh, that's a whole different news you can use. We'll talk about that in, coming up. Um, it, it's an outside dark horse, but I think it's getting stronger. There is. Uh, a little bit of a possibility of that happening, and that could dramatically affect our market positively if that happens, by the way. So we'll talk about that on future news you can use. All right, that's it for today. Sorry, a little long-winded today, but, you know, with three or four days off, I had a lot of time to research, so... <laughs>